Is it worth it to put electrically conductive metal in your graphic card in the attempt to lower the thermal issues you're having? The new NVIDIA 3000 series has a lot of thermal issues, and many of us who mine very much know about this. Let's talk about copper modding your graphic cards, whether it's the 3070, 80, 90, anything like that. Let's talk about copper modding it and seeing is it worth it in your position, and if it is, how do we go about doing it? Let's go over how to actually check and see if you even have temperature issues with your graphic card's memory. A lot of the time that people comment or say things about this, they're like, hey, my memory is perfectly fine. Look, I checked the temperature, it's super low, and whenever they tell me the temperature ranges, I usually can tell that they didn't actually check it. They're actually looking at the GPU temperature, not the memory temperature. Usually, the memory temperature isn't actually something people worry about. This is a pretty newish thing. There's not been many series before, the 3000 series that had these issues. Um, and for example, I have MSI Afterburner up here, and on my 6600 XT, you can see that the temperature is 54, 53 Celsius, which is great, right? That's, the, that's not the memory temperature, that is the graphic card's temperature, that is not what we're talking about here. So we actually need to download some other software to check the memory temperature specifically. I'm going to show you two ways to check the memory's temperature. The first way I'm going to show you is going to be with Windows and how do you check it with Windows. Well, I personally like this one right here. All links are going to be down below. HW Info I found to be incredibly useful. And also note that not every graphic card actually has memory temperature sensors in them. So it is going to depend also on your graphic card, but most of the 3000 series, I believe starting from the 3070 up, always have it. So if we go to hwinfo.com, which I'll put everything down in the link below, you can actually hit this download button at the top right, and you're going to see right here, I'm going to download uh, the local US version. Just wait for it, and it's going to give you the download. Um, run the installer. It's not going to be hard. I'm sure you can run an installer. And once it actually runs, we're going to start it up, and we're going to right here click on sensors. So you're going to scroll down until you find one called GPU Memory Junction Temperature. You can actually see right here, mine says 66C, and the actual GPU temperature is 53C. So they are different, and that's why I was saying a lot of people, when they comment about it, they don't actually check the actual memory temperature, they're checking the GPU temperature. They're not the same. A lot of the mining software that you can use or algorithms actually show you the temperatures now through an update since it's now an issue that a lot of people need to be aware of. Um, as I said before, this isn't something that's commonly shown because it was never really an issue for most of graphic card history, especially with mining. But you can see right here, under the column where it says temp, I'm highlighting just one of my graphic cards, where it says 6194. The 61 is actually my graphic card's temperature, the 94 is the graphic card's memory temperature. And so the memory temperature for that one, as you can see, is 94. And um, Let's, let's talk about now that I showed you how to check it on Windows or you know, through the actual mining software you're using. Let's talk about, is 94 dangerous? What is dangerous? What is safe? What should bring concern for you? I really don't want to spend too long on talking about what is safe and what is not, because honestly, it could be a whole video on its own about talking about the lifespan of hardware. But in my personal opinion, I do think anything under 90 degrees Celsius is safe. For long-term mining, is it you know, wanted that you want it in the 80s? No, but I would be perfectly comfortable with running it in the 80s for long term because I don't think that's going to die any time that I'm going to be using it. So I personally do think 80s is a perfectly acceptable. Anything below 80, that is fantastic. Now when we're talking about 90 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, that, that is a still reasonable rate, especially if you're getting in that range from manufacturer and that's how it came to you, you might want to consider not actually opening it up, especially if you're a gamer, don't open it up, because you don't want to lose that warranty. The warranty is worth keeping, and if it's outside of warranty, then absolutely, I would suggest throw in some new thermal pads, put in some copper, and get it down to the 80s or below. I think that would be a great idea, but don't lose the manufacturing warranty because you wanted to get it down a little bit more. Especially because I did this personally, if you're in the 90s, you can usually get about 6 to 10 degrees Celsius down by just 
putting a big block of a heat sink with some thermal pads on the back of it, zip tying it to the back of your graphic card, and that works wonders. You can usually get a good drop, nothing dramatic, but a good enough drop that you might be able to get to your goal, what I would consider a safe range with that alone and without having to open it up and lose warranty. Now, what if you're over 100C? If you're over 100C, at least if you can, add a heat sink to the back of it. If you add a heat sink to the back and get it at least down to the 90s, then you can still consider, you know, don't open it up, don't lose your manufacturing warranty. If you're over 105C, I definitely suggest that the warranty is not worth it and you should definitely replace the thermal pads at a minimum, maybe even add a heat sink on top of that. Uh, it, I mean, I, I am not comfortable with any memory running constantly at 105 or up. That makes me very nervous. But I, I don't like the 100 plus range. I, I do think that's dramatically bad. And if you're hitting the 110, that's where most of these cards actually throttle themselves. You're actually losing hash rate, you're losing power because it's not, it's not even able to use its full power because it's heating so much, it stops itself from even working. You'll actually get dramatically better results, whether you're gaming or whether you're mining, by replacing the thermal pads or putting on a heat sink and just getting that temperature down below 110. So let's wrap this up. Anything under 90, I'm perfectly very happy with that, and I think that's great for long-term mining. Anything in the 90s, that still makes me a little bit nervous, but you can definitely get away with it, though I would personally take action on that. Anything over 105, I definitely will take action upon, and I do think that is too hot for long-term mining. In the end, I'm going to tell you copper rocks, it's the best thing you can do, but let's talk about the buildup and when you should even get to using copper, because honestly, not everybody needs to use copper. Usually, when your graphic card comes in, if it's above 90 degrees, for example, sometimes even over 100, it just comes down to the manufacturer using a crappy thermal pad. Get a good thermal pad. I'll add a link down below for what I used for my 3090s, but you do want to look up what your graphic card specifically needs, because each graphic card and manufacturer uses different sizes for the thermal pads, and you, there are plenty of videos on how to replace the thermal pads for your graphic card. But if you have room on your graphic card, definitely try a heat sink. Just get a heat sink, put on some thermal pads on the bottom of it, and zip tie it to the back of the graphic card. Usually this will help depending on the graphic card you have. This helps with graphic cards that have memory on the back. If your graphic card doesn't have memory on the back, this is not a solution for you. But just look up your graphic card, see if there's memory on the back of it, and you'll find a quick Google answer to it. And if it does have memory on the back, absolutely try out a heatsink as long as you have room to add one. It can do a great job, and the ones I'm going to provide in the description are actually larger than you'll probably need, but I've tried different sizes, and going overkill on it just was the best option for me. Now, the next step definitely would be trying thermal pads. It's a much cheaper alternative to attempt first before you go on to the next step of trying copper. A lot of the time, for example, my Gigabyte card that I have, when I added thermal pads, it had all of the issues go away. It literally went from the 90s to the low 70s. And then I added a heat sink on top of it just for fun, and it went down to the 60 degrees like range. It's super cool. I'm super happy with those results, and I don't need copper within it. So it's much cheaper to just have thermal pads and it's much easier as well with less risk because there is, as I said before, the risk with copper is you're adding electrically conductive metals to your graphic card, which can be dangerous. Now, let's say you run into the problem that I ran into. You fix your Gigabyte card and it's perfectly cool. Now, you have Zotac 3090s and those things are running at 110 degrees Celsius. It is extremely hot and extremely dangerous and you need to do something about it now. So then, you go down the route of saying, you know what, I'm gonna add a heat sink. It's not good enough, you're still in the hundreds. You add new thermal pads, it's still not good enough. It's still in the hundreds and it can get up to 105 still or more depending on the heat outside and the coolest it really gets to is the high 90s. The Zotac cards I've had in my hands have been a nightmare and I've come across many of them as well and every single Zotac 3090 I've come across has been a nightmare with the heat. If this is an issue you're running into like myself, that is when you should start looking into using copper. Copper is going to be the solution for you. So comparing my Zotac cards, I actually have two 3090s that are both Zotacs. One has a copper plate from Cool My GPU and one has my own custom DIY version. Cool My GPUs actually outperformed mine dramatically. My own custom copper was still hitting about 102 Celsius on a hot day in the summer versus a hot day in the summer with Cool My GPU's backplate that's copper, that ended up being about 84 Celsius quite reliably. So a dramatic difference. 
The back plates are majorly going to be needed for any card. I believe it's the 3080 and above. Those series have memory on the back, which causes massive issues because they don't have real good heat sinks on the back of it. But anything that doesn't have back memory, well, it can still actually have major issues. You do need to check. And then if it only has front memory, then all you got to do is add some front plates with the copper and you will be golden. I actually personally like the copper even more than thermal pads. I've gotten comfortable enough with replacing it that I'm wanting to put it on all my graphic cards just because I can. It's going to make it super cool. And honestly, I hate replacing the thermal pads every year or two. Because when you do add higher quality thermal pads, they do also last a lot less long as the manufacturers. So you're going to have to get used to when you use thermal pads. Even though it's a cheaper route, you're going to have to get used to probably replacing it here or there if you're mining on it and it's running hot enough that it's going to dry out probably every year or two, to be honest. And some people, depending on your environment, it can dry out even faster, sometimes three to six months. But I want to make a huge shout out to CoolMyGPU.com. I am not sponsored by them at all. I actually bought all the materials from them myself because I heard about them and I am super happy about their results. I mean, they did a great job. It was so incredibly easy to install. I totally recommend if you are having heating issues, definitely go down the Cool My GPU's back plates and front plates route because I really think it's going to help you a dramatic amount. Especially because if you go down the liquid cooling or oil, the mineral oil cooling route, don't get me wrong, those are extremely effective. They are the most effective, but that is not a cheap route. And it can really cost a lot of money to do things like that. And when we're mining, everything that's cost effective makes a big deal in our profits. So I like my profits being as high as possible. I don't really want to invest too much into other things. I am going to be doing mineral oil in the future, but that's majorly going to be for fun. And also because I want to use it on my ASICs more than I want to use it on my graphic cards. But tell me what you think. So this hopefully was very helpful for you to be able to check and verify if your graphic card is at a safe memory temperature. And if it is or isn't, hopefully you now know maybe the things you can start working towards to get it fixed. I do have videos on my TikTok and YouTube YouTube on how to replace the thermal pads. Now, I also have a video coming out tomorrow, actually, right after this video, or it might not even be out already right now. You can probably click the link right here to be able to see it on how to actually add the copper plates if you want to go down the copper plate route. I really didn't want to shove the video of how to do the copper plates here, which is why I'm going to release it the next day on a separate video because I didn't want this to be too long. Most of you are probably going to try out the heat sink or the thermal pads and find out that is perfectly acceptable and you don't need the copper plates. And many of you are going to go, no, I need the copper plates or you just want to do it because it's super cool and you also actually need it. So if you go down that route, then go check out that video. So I'm going to have everything down in the description. I'm going to make sure I link everything properly. If you have any questions, please do not be afraid to ask. I also have a Discord server where I respond way more reliably. And there's a lot more experienced miners as well that will tell you exactly what they think, their opinions on the situation. They're incredibly helpful and they help me every day. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know whenever I make a new video. And like always, thank you so much and have a wonderful day.